I left Islam. It's taken me a long time to get the courage to make this video. And I'll admit that I'm afraid there will be real consequences in my life after I publish this. Apostate, a person who leaves a religion, in this case Islam, put themselves at terrible risk. In many parts of the world, it is extremely dangerous for an individual to leave Islam. Consequences for doing so can result in banishment, imprisonment, extreme violence, and even death. The violent execution is often carried out by those closest to the victim. They include, but are not limited to, beheading, being thrown from rooftops, or even stoning. This is not restricted to Muslim-majority countries either. Harassment, violence, and murder towards ex-Muslims even occur in Canada, Australia, USA, and Europe. The UK in particular has the highest concentration of acid attacks in the Western world, many of which are carried out against ex-Muslims. Here are a few examples of what ex-Muslims have to endure in Western countries. This is Nisa Hussein, a father of six. Two hooded men brutally beat him to the ground. He was left with broken bones and hospitalized. He says he was attacked because he left the faith of Islam. There was every adult male in my immediate family and a religious leader sitting in the center. It was my decision to, to leave the religion. And before I knew it, fists were connecting to my face. I was being hit all over. Like your dad or your brother will do if they find out you're an atheist. Kill me, maybe. However, I do not want these potential consequences deterring me from telling my personal story. Considering my past videos, talking about sex clubs, polyamory, even an interview with a gigolo, you'd think I grew up in an open, progressive or liberal environment. However, that is not the case. I was born into a traditional and conservative Malay Muslim family in Singapore. I was raised to pray five times a day. I did it habitually to seek out a sense of family unity. Furthermore, I enjoyed the parental validation that it brought. I took for granted that I was a Muslim by birth and never truly questioned it. Even from the age of eight, it was expected of me to wear the hijab whenever I went outside. However, by the time I was 12, I found myself feeling increasingly disconnected from my family. I wasn't able to have any sort of philosophical discussions that did not eventually lead to Islam. This meant I could never truly open up to them about the fact that I didn't particularly believe in the religion. It never occurred to me while growing up that leaving Islam was an option. Even at 18, I wasn't aware that there was such a thing as an ex-Muslim. Was being secular more in tune with who I am? I wanted to know what else life had to offer. I explored this question at 19 by sneakily going out without my hijab, attending music festivals and living almost as freely as I wanted all while still keeping up appearances at home in front of my family. In my pursuit to find my own path, I learned more about Islam and how it did not coincide with my personal ideals. Ultimately, I came to the conclusion that my life would be severely restricted if I continued living as a practicing Muslim. I was shocked to discover that I was not alone. There are millions of other ex-Muslims all over the world. The vast majority of them conceal their apostasy out of fear of persecution by the Islamic community. Ex-Muslims suffering verbal and physical abuse, being shunned by their immediate family, is commonplace. A 2010 Pew Research Center survey showed that Muslims in Egypt, Jordan, Pakistan and Nigeria would favour a death penalty for those who leave the religion. 
I reached out to several ex-Muslim activists, such as Yasmin Mohammed, Sarah Haider, Abdullah Samir, and Zara Kay. Furthermore, I joined the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, as well as posted my questions on the R Ex Muslim subreddit. Hardly any ex Muslims replied to my inquiries. Most who did simply stated that they were still closeted about their apostasy. Very few were willing to go into depth about the subject. Furthermore, despite my best efforts, I have yet to find any recent statistics on ex Muslims online. Thankfully, I was living in Singapore, where violence is not openly tolerated and where there are no apostasy laws in place. Still, my life would have been a lot easier had I chosen to remain as a closeted ex Muslim. The only problem was I was tired of lying to myself and others. I fully expected that once I announced my apostasy, my family would throw me out. Thus, I saved up money for an entire year, so that I'd have a safety net to fall on should the worst occur. When I was ready, I used a PowerPoint presentation to explain to my entire family why I was leaving Islam. Some of them were brought to tears by my decision. The next few months, were extremely difficult. While my family did not evict me, they did treat me like a stranger in my own home, which was in many ways worse. Meanwhile, my mother kept suggesting that I meet a religious figure, who she believed could persuade me to rejoin Islam. I refused because I wanted something different out of life. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I was going to do now, that I'd been shunned by my family. I made the decision to start traveling with friends then on my own. I visited Japan, Indonesia, Thailand, Hong Kong, Macau, and Laos. While traveling, I discovered that I did not have to stay in Singapore, where I'd face constant disapproval from my family. I could build a new home for myself. So I decided to move to Bangkok, then Europe, and have kept traveling ever since. I do try to contact my family from time to time, but am either ignored, met with hostility, or pressured to return to Islam. I wish they would be willing to talk to me without it spiraling into how I should return to Islam. But any attempts to set such boundaries are always disregarded. My family almost never contact me anymore unless I reach out to them first. And even then, I'm usually ignored. They wouldn't even respond when I told them that I was going to get married. By contrast, they all instantly responded with a lot of outrage when I once shared a picture of me petting a dog, which is forbidden in Islam. I miss my family terribly and it breaks my heart that we are so estranged. My parents want to remain devout Muslims, and I'm fine with that. Furthermore, I fully understand why my decision to leave Islam was a huge shock to them. However, their unwillingness to accept me as I am has created a huge division between us, which I fear might never be mended. I love making videos and I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. However, considering my circumstances, I need to take a small break in order to prioritize my safety. I truly appreciate your continued support. It means a lot to me. If everything works out, I'll be back soon. Ciao.